Hello, my dear students of Class 11 Science. I would like to welcome you all once again to Environmental Science class. So we have finished the chapter Pollution. So from today's class, we are going to begin with the new chapter which is called the Modes of Existence. Okay. Now, like all of the living beings, may it be human being or any other life form we can say uh, life human life and non-human life okay so each and every living organisms may it be human being or any other animals all are dependent on the nature all are dependent on the products or the natural resources which have been given by the nature free of cost Okay, so even we are dependent on the products of our nature, of our ecosystem. So we are dependent on air, we are dependent on water, soil, okay? Like the all other living organisms, we are dependent on those natural resources, on those natural products for their survival. So we are also the one who are dependent on the products of nature. On the natural resources for our own survival the food that we are taking in the air we breathe okay whatever the tools we are using whatever the clothes that we are wearing all these things all these particular products are obtained from the nature okay the air the oxygen that we are breathing in we are obtaining it from the nature and we are not paying a single penny for that okay we are getting free of course from the nature but men's equation with nature has undergone changes over a period of time we the human being have been bringing the changes in the environmental conditions we are the one who try to dominate the environment we are trying to bring the changes in the environment so about 12,000 years ago the last the last ice age it came to an end okay the continent the ocean they have reached a configuration like more or less the present day state the climatic changes stabilized and with it the distribution of the vegetations took up the present day form it was in this particular state that the man began organizing himself in order to survive the hardships of nature okay so in order to survive with the hardship of nature the human being has to undergo certain changes they have to adapt they have to adjust in this particular changing environmental condition so that's why today we are going to learn about the different modes of existence so we have got the first one called the hunting and gathering mode of existence we have got pastoralism mode of existence we have got agricultural mode of existence we have got industrial mode of existence okay so these are the different modes of existence now each mode of existence has to be described, has to be discussed with a particular feature, in a particular group. Okay, so all the four types of mode of existence, hunting, gathering, pastoralism, agriculture, industrial, we are going to discuss each and every one under the general features. Okay, then we will discuss it under social organization. We have to learn it under ideology scale of catchment access to resources and ecological impact so those four modes of existence first one was hunting and gathering second one pastoralism third one agricultural and next we have got industrial so this four mode of existence has to be studied under general features social organization ideology scale of catchment access to resources and ecological impact so today we are going to learn about the first mode of existence which is called hunting and gathering mode of existence okay so today we learn about hunting and gathering mode of existence so this particular hunting and gathering mode of existence is also known as a foraging culture okay it's also known as a foraging culture foraging culture means uh like they used to move from one place to another place in sorts of food okay they used to go for migration we can say okay they used to go for movement they used to move from one location from one habitat to the other habitat in sorts of food so they 
have got foraging type of culture and hunting and gathering modes of existence they mainly comprise okay they mainly comprise of a group of people who are dependent primarily on the wild food for survival so they are dependent primarily on wild food for the survival as what of stone age ancestors okay their strategies for survival have been diverse and they were dependent mainly on the local environment it could uh, range from hunting and trapping of big game okay trapping small animals or it can be of um, collecting self insect so such societies still exist in more isolated part of india okay still they are it, uh, they are there okay so many of the differences among the hunting and gathering societies are due to ecological variation so they are totally dependent on the local environment for their survival few examples of hunting and gathering are we have got the pet okay the pet who practice communal ownership of land okay because th the soil was fertile and the crop plant and the animal matter to sustain a stable human population was there because the soil was fertile so they used to mainly they have got this communal ownership of the land okay the next one we have got uh shoshone and woods okay shoshone and woods they were forced to lead a nomadic existence nomadic means they were have to move from one place to another place okay because the particular land on which they were living they were not so much uh, like productive so they have got nomadic existence they have to move from one location to another location all right so now let us talk with hunting and gathering under social organization how was the social organization under hunting and gathering okay so the food gatherers are the earliest of human society so they are relatively mobile that means they have to move from one place to another place so they are relatively mobile as they have to rely on the environment to provide them with sufficient resources to sustain the population because they have to move from one place to another place in need of food in sorts of food okay so they are mobile and they were totally dependent on the local environment to get the resources to sustain to feed their population and uh, they mainly comprise of a small group of 10 to 30 individuals from the same family okay but many of them used to gather seasonally to form a temporarily large group if the resources are abundant if they are unlimited then they can form a temporary larger group usually they used to have a smaller group of 10 to 30 individuals but when the resources are l l unlimited okay when the resources are abundant then that time they can temporarily form a larger group okay so usually they have got a small territory of about 20 square miles and they used to move within this area at a slow pace as they gather food while they travel okay so they usually have got an area of 20 square mile and the hunting and gathering they have a comparatively non-hierarchical society and they have got egalitarian social structure egalitarian means egalitarian means like each and everyone have got equal rights listen very carefully okay egalitarian means where we have got the social rights social equality and equality rights for all the people so this hunting and gathering mode existence they have got comparatively non hierarchical societies and they have got egalitarian social structure where each and every individual have got the equal rights or the social equality we can say okay but also we can see few things over here in hunting and gathering that the differences of positions and the rank was based on the age and the sex okay and the division of labor that means division of work it was mainly based on the sex okay so since there is division of labor based on the sex so therefore men usually used to go for the hunt and the female they used to gather the fruits and the veggie tables and this division of labor is more recent phenomenon probably to ensure a greater efficiency in collecting food clear the oldest member in the group is the decision maker so these are the few things that we have to remember under hunting and gathering mode of existence okay so they usually ask that they will usually ask that uh, on what basis the division of labor is there on the hunting and gathering mode of existence clear 
So when we see check it out, you can see over here that the division of labor is based on the sex. Okay, men usually, men usually they used to hunt, whereas the women or the female they used to gather fruit and vegetables. The next one you have to remember is that the oldest member, okay, the oldest member in the group, like in the family, the one who will be the oldest, the one who will be the oldest will solely be responsible for making the decision. So the oldest member in the group is the decision maker. So these things you have to remember. All right. So these are the few things that you have to remember under hunting and gathering mode of existence. And the one we just talked about the yet egalitarian social structure. Okay. It mainly originated from the fact that the mobility of the society required minimization of material position and hence no member of the group accumulated any surplus and violence was uncommon and was usually precipitated by grudges rather than the greed so this particular hunting and gathering mode of existence their social organization we have seen that they were uh, like a uh, highly mobile and highly mobile types of people moving from one place to another place in search of food and they were totally dependent on the local environment to obtain natural resources to sustain their family and they usually used to have a small group of people like maybe eight to ten that also within the same family but whenever the resources were lim unlimited when it was abundant they can form a larger group but for a tem temporary period of time okay so these things we have learned and we just learned that they have got uh, egalitarian society they have got non-hierarchical societies okay and the division of labor was based on the sex where men was used to collect the or uh, used to go for hunting and the female was mainly employed for the food collections and the oldest member of the family of the group was the decision maker now next one we learn about the ideology or idiom of men nature relationship all right so how does they used to treat the nature so the hunting and gathering mode of people they used to treat the environment okay like a parent and child so the hunter gatherers relationship with the environment is like parent and child so you have remember this thing okay so the relationship with the environment is like that of a parent and child in case of hunting and gathering mode of existence being totally dependent on the nature because they are dependent on the nature to obtain the resources to sustain their family okay so they look upon the nature like their own parents okay so primitive lifestyles small size of the population minimizes the impact of the environment ensuring a sustainable development without impacting without harming the ecology or the environmental conditions so idiom of main nature relationship ideology is that the hunters and gatherers they used to treat the environment like their own parent okay next one we have got scale of catchment the hunting and gatherer they used to depend totally on the nature for the sustenance for the survival they were totally dependent on the nature on the local environmental conditions okay however their lifestyle is primitive and the requirements are limited to just food and shelter though they are mobile though they used to move from one place to another place but they cover fairly a larger special area okay and uh, they do not uh, succeed in making the best use of the resources which was offered to them okay and they used to have lower economic status so whatever the resources that was available to them that means natural resources that was available to them they were not able to use it on a better way okay now next one we'll talk about the access to resources so wide range of plants resources were at the disposals so this hunter gatherer had a wide range of plant resources okay so they have got variety of nuts we can say they have got fruits vegetables roots cereals which was consumed by them the bark of the tree they were used for clothing bamboo was used to make herds canaries and weapons uh, this canaries canaries means we can see a small and a narrow boat okay so it was mainly made up of bamboo the hunter they were not only dependent on animals for meat but they also used the skin of the animals to mainly part of the cold so in case of cold climatic conditions they used to use the skin of the animals also so 
these particular hunters and gatherers though they were not totally they were they were not successfully able to use the available resources but up to a certain point they were able to use it okay now next one we learn about the ecological impact under this egg uh, under this hunter and gatherers mode of existence because they were totally dependent on the environment on the nature for their sustenance for their survival okay so what will the impact on the environment so the impact on the environment was not a permanent one okay damage was there fine damage was there this is true but the impact was not a permanent one so the hunter gatherer dependent on plants and animals for their food although these have an impact on the environment but those impact was not for a permanent period of time for example this very carefully buffalo hunting in north america did not affect the population of the buffalo because these hunters and gatherers they just used to hunt the male buffalo so the population was not affected all right on hunting however a large number of mammals under this hunting and gathering mode of existence they became extinct due to excessive hunting and this leads to the loss of genetic diversity because species are being extinct and whenever the species becomes extinct there will be loss of genetic diversity so since large number of animals were being extinct under hunting and gathering mode of existence there was loss of genetic diversity and the maximum impact to the environment okay which was done at the time of this particular mode of existence was due to the discovery of fire so discovery of fire led to the destruction of habitats changed the chemistry of the soil and disrupted the biogeochemical cycle so discovery of fire is one of the key thing that led to the heavy impact on environment on ecology under hunting and gathering mode of existence clear next thing so whenever there was a uh, important environment so they were going for cutting down of trees so the loss of trees covered decreased transpiration rate resulted in water logging and formation of box okay uh, box means area of decayed vegetations because they were going for deforestation okay so the inter area looks to be barren so b o g s box okay b o g s box means we can say uh, area of uh, decayed vegetations clear uh the condition was ideal for the formation of a pit so therefore heavy rains percolating through this acidic pit was responsible for leaching of soil nutrient leaching means the nutrients which are present in the soil used to be washed away okay and lead to mosaic of woodlands and box because there was massive deforestation there is massive cutting down of trees so a pattern was mainly been formed which looks like a uh, area of decaying vegetables a uh, area which are totally barren without any trees without any plants so therefore this deforestation that took place at the time of hunting and gathering mode of existence lead to a uh, mosaic of woodlands and box so therefore this particular damage was there on the ecology on the environment on the nature but said that this particular damage were not up to that permanent level okay so today we have learnt about the modes of existence we learned that we have got four types of mode of existence first one that is hunting and gathering mode of existence second one we have got pastoralism we have got agricultural and industrial industrial mode of existence and we also learned that each mode of existence should be learned under general features okay under social organization ideology or idiom of man and nature relationship scale of catchment access to resources and ecological impact so this much for today's class okay we will begin with the same chapter with the second mode of existence that is pastoralism in our next class all right till then stay safe and take care of yourself we will meet we will be meeting with each other in next class thank you